All right, here we go. Let's start. Okay, so tonight we're going to cover two chapters, okay? But the first chapter only has seven slides, not counting the two introductory. So we're going to have five. So we're going to knock through it pretty quick, and then we'll get to the next one. So tonight we're going to talk about, um, can you click on that slide for me now? Thank you. Tonight we're going to be basically going through uh, the differences in regards to the concepts of land, real estate, real property. If you ended up, uh, if you were in my law of contracts, and I think contract forms, we already have discussed that. So it's going to be kind of a, a refresher, okay? Um, we're going to explain the rights that convey with ownership real property. Uh, and we're also going to identify the characteristics of a fixture, trade fixture, and also the legal test for these fixtures. So this chapter should be, for those of you that take in the other class, should be a review, okay? So it's gonna be relatively simple. Those of you that have not taken the other class, this is going to be something that we're going to hit on relatively quick, um, but we're also gonna spend a little bit of time just refreshing everybody, okay? So the first thing that we wanna start off with is, is talking about the definitions. Well, land, of course, we know what land is. It's the earth's surface downward uh, to the center of the earth and upward to infinity, uh, basically including permanent and natural objects. Okay, so land is everything, as always say, down to the hills and up to the heavens. Okay, uh, because what happens is it goes all the way up and all the way down. Okay, uh, so that's what land is and anything that's natural. So, Mr. Travis, is a tree natural? Yeah. Is a, uh, is a concrete barrier natural? No. Well, why not? It's not natural. Well, Mr. Eugene, we, we know for a fact the street, that's that's natural. Why, why are you saying no? Man-made. Oh, natural. Okay. So a goalie, that's not man-made. That's that's natural, right? A goalie? Yeah, the little concrete goalie. Yeah, you know. It's concrete as fuck. Oh, man. Well, I know for a fact that grass, it's not natural. Correct. Just let them believe it. So as you can see, is yes, grass, soil, trees, any of those things are natural objects. Okay. The reason I do that is because on your test, they write it like that. They make it seem like that. If it is anything man-made, it's not going to be natural. Okay. In regards to real estate, a lot of people always says I'm a real estate agent. Okay. And so they say, well, I'm a real estate agent, so I say a land at or above, or above or below the earth's surface, plus all things permanently attached to it, whether natural and artificial. Okay? That's where it stops at, right? No, no. We also have real property. As a real estate agent, you actually sell real property, not real estate, okay? Because real property, is land plus real estate gives you real property. That's all I say, it's A plus B equals C, okay? So yes, you can sell land. Real estate is gonna be land with maybe a house on it. Maybe Travis bought some land and built a house on it. Well, he the house is real estate and the land, of course, is the land, okay? But all together, it's real property because there are certain legal rights they go along with that real estate. Does that make sense, okay? So when you're looking at this and you're dealing with this, land plus real estate, it comes together to give you real property. And that is what you as a real estate agent, you are selling, okay? Now, there are, and you will hear these words, there is surface, subsurface, um, and there is also in some situations, uh, there is air rights, okay? So again, in that situation, when you're going through these different situations, you are going to have surface, subsurface, and air rights, okay? Um, understand in these situations, what's surface, Travis? What is exactly surface? Ground level. Ground level. So what you're walking on outside is surface. Can you, uh, can you walk on air? No. Can you walk on subsurface? Pretty difficult, right? 
unless you unless you dig and dig and dig and get down to the, the core of the earth, then you can say I walked on the nest of surface. Well, that is true. <laughs> that is true. So in that situation, it's very difficult. Okay. So again, these are subsurfaces, the minerals underneath what you're standing on. And like Travis said, if I'm on the surface, there's got to be something underneath me for it to end up equaling basically subsurface. Okay. Now, this kind of gives you a breakdown in this situation. You have land, real estate, real property. It gives you kind of that breakdown of what you're looking at. With land, they kind of showed you the earth here. And in that situation is, uh, you can't end up, hold on, hold on just a minute, everybody. Give me just a second here. Okay, so in that situation, as you see, you have land, you have real estate, and you have real property. Okay, now what they did was they took the earth. All right, they took the earth, they put the land here, you have your surface, your subsurface is underneath it, and then your air rights are up here at the top. Your real estate is that same little pie, that piece of the pie, with the trees and the house on it. With the real property, it ends up, it's the trees, the house, and then you'll see this nice little bundle here, okay? This bundle is that legal of rights, okay? So, Mr. Eugene, you own a property. Can you, uh, if you wanted to, could you rent that property off to Travis? Yeah. Okay. So, what part of that would fall under this, Mr. Eugene? Land, real estate, or real property? Uh, real property. Okay. And then, what part of real property would it be? Uh, are we talking about uh, the bundle. The bundle of legal rights. Okay. The bundle of legal rights is what you are giving off. Right. right. Okay. So what I always do, and it, I used to have one until they got rid of it, but I used to have some twigs, and I had it bundled up. And what I do every semester is I take those twigs, and I'd go around and say, okay, Mr. Eugene, here's you a twig, Travis, you a twig, Linda, here's you a twig. Every one of you get a twig, okay? And in that twig, what ends up happening? Well, that twig ends up, it provides for you to go over there and you can grant that off, okay? So in this situation I is, ma'am? I can't hear you. Keith, can you hear me now? Leela, can you hear me? Yes. So Keith, it must be Keith. Thank you, Miss Leela. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can tell you that everyone else can hear. So in that particular situation, for some reason we're having technical difficulties tonight, everybody. I can't hear you. So, <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I have a question. Layla has a question. Layla, just a minute. Okay. Okay, Layla has a question. Okay, what's your question? With this uh, that you're describing, and you're saying that in regards to selling property, we're selling property as far as the house, man-made and natural, and that includes the land. Mm -hmm. Because I thought they were trying to do kind of like what China was doing, where you have the house and the man-made things, but the land would never be yours. Oh, no. In, in the United States, the land and everything transfers with the house. Okay. So Does that include know, commercial property as well? There are situations where a company would sell, a company would want to keep the mineral rights, yeah. which would be certain subsurface like rights to like oil or minerals underneath, but you would still get the land except for those minerals. And I think, Ms. Lily, you were just saying there, what about commercial as well? Right. 
what normally happens at the commercial level is this it's normally not one person buying a commercial property yeah. like downtown houston those big buildings those skyscrapers are not normally one person it's a, a group of investors and so what happens is is the corporation that those investors are in owns that land now the city can say for example in, in houston the city of houston can say that sure mr travis and mr eugene and miss linda and miss lila y'all can build a skyscraper but we own this land so we were only leasing the land to you and so what happens is is there are certain cities that they own like the land downtown and they are simply leasing that land to individuals to build on. And in, in that situation, when there's a sale, you're only selling the building and not the actual land. Does that make sense? Yes. So, but in a the guy from owning the skyscraper in Houston, just tearing it down because he doesn't want to have it anymore. Exactly. Ever. exactly. The city of Houston would say no. Exactly. So it, there are certain rules and all, but yes, in, in residential, the land is going to convey with the house, okay? <laughs> Unless there are other, and, and understand, Miss Linda can tell you, across the board, Miss Linda, is it always ending up, is it gonna be perfect, okay? No. Is everything standard? Can you have standardized real estate? Nope, I wish. Yeah. Everything's different. So in one city, it may do it this way. In another city, they do it completely different. And then when you go into other states and other countries, it's even crazier. So again, we're just giving you the basis, but again, anything can happen. That's what I always tell okay. people. Everybody always asks me, can you standardize this? Yeah, I wish I could, but unfortunately I can't. Okay, thank Unless you. you a question? Oh, no, I'm just, okay. I was gonna say, so like, with real property, if I sell you a house, huh? if I'm selling you, you know, one, two, three Main Street, yep. you're getting the land plus the man-made structures yep. plus the rights to live on that land. That's correct. If you then rent it out to Eugene, yep. you still own the real estate. Right. You're just allowing him the legal rights to live in that property. He's getting the possession, which yes. is what we're getting to. And I think that's our next okay. slide here, I believe. Yes. Okay. But I was gonna say so, but he's yeah. But you're legal leading, rights, but you still own the cor land. correct. Yeah. You're leading into this right here. So in this situation, you have in the bundle of rights, you have possession, control, enjoyment, exclusion, and disposition. Okay. So like you were saying earlier, when I was talking about handing out the twigs, I can say, Mr. Eugene. Um, I want you here, you, you want to rent my property, here's the possession twig. So I can't possess the property because Mr. Eugene is. But I may say, Mr. Travis, you're a real estate professional, you're a broker, I want you to control my property. Well, that would so, be like a property manager. Exactly, you'd be a manager, okay? So Mr. Eugene has possession. Mr. Uh, Stahl, you are the control, you're controlling it. And then what I also can do is I can give away enjoyment. So I can say, Mr. Eugene, you can possess the properties on these dates and time, but I also want to give it to Miss Leela to enjoy on the weekends. So Mr. Eugene, you have it for Monday through Friday, but on the weekends, Miss Leela can enjoy it on Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. Also, we can exclude. So as an owner, I can exclude certain people off the property. So I can say, I don't want Garrett on my property, okay? Or just like with anything else, I have the right to exclude certain individuals to come into my property, okay? And then lastly, the disposition is the will, is how am I going to will the property? So when I die, now that's, that's the next question. If I die, and I give, I will my property to Stefan. Okay, so I've died and Stefan gets it. Does that mean, Mr. Stahl, that you lose control and Mr. Eugene loses possession and Miss Leela loses enjoyment? No. What happens? It stays intact as is until the agreement terminates. So that means. Go around and look at it for you, Lee. Money so, just in the morning. That's a situation.
that what we're ending up seeing is this, is that Mr. Stahl, you have control, so you can, can still control it till that termination or termination in the contract. And Mr. Eugene, as a tenant, if you're renting, if your lease ends in 12 months after I die, you still get to stay in that property. You see how this works? Is disposition also your right to sell it, or is that just? I can still sell too. Yeah. But is that is that is that in disposition? Is that part of that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. I don't know. Have... I get that a lot. Where, for example, my we want to sell a rental property that my dad owned. Uh huh. But the lady who lives there is worried that if we sell it, she'll have to move. And yep. like, no, we're just going to sell it to another investor yep. who will most likely let you live there. And if they want to move in or whatever, they have to wait till you're terminated. You're that is correct. Right. That is 100% correct. When if, if in that situation, if I just decide up and one day I've given Mr. Eugene the right to live in the property for 10 years, okay, yeah. and then Mr. Eugene you know, I've got it for 10 years and Stefan walks in and Stefan tells me that, hey, I want to go over here and I want to purchase the property. Well, I can sell it to Stefan, but everything that I've already done has to stay until the term has lapsed. Okay. Or there's sense. another agreement. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So what's personal property? What is personal property? What's sitting in here right now is personal property. Chairs, yes. Chairs, chairs, desks, and podium, non cell phones, non things that are attached. Yes. No. Personal property is often referred to also as chattels. Yeah. It's known as chattels. Yes. Of course, you look at these two and it's simple, right? Those two are simple. But in the other one, you know as chattels. Give me just a minute. It's chattels. Chattels. I like his version better. You like chattels? Chattels. 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 Hey, Siri. How do you say C H A T T L E S? Are you really? You said it. You said it wrong. You're doing it right now. Sure, translate it to which language? Arabic. Oh, uh, there you go. Spanish. Arabic. Japanese. Arabic. No. <laughs> hey, I was trying to have some fun. <laughs> Shit. C H A T T E L S. So, in that situation, it's, it's chattels. But what happens is, is it's anything that is. And the easiest way to know this is this. It is anything that is not real property. Make sense? Yes. So in that situation is anything that is not real property is personal. That simple. So, Mr. Eugene, uh, let me ask you, this, this window here, we can take this home with us, can't we? I'm going to see you try. You want to see me try? Yeah, get out of it. Well, let's take this wall with us. So far, that part, the good part. Like what? So in that situation, what is it? It's attached. It's attached. Okay, we're going to talk about that here in a minute. But it's attached. Okay. So again, you need to know the difference between personal and real property. Now, manufactured housing. Why in the world did they put manufactured housing under personal property? They're not attached. They're not, They're not always attached. You can take that thing wherever you want to. Exactly. With the personal property, what can you end up doing? That well, trailer houses have what? They're on a trailer, and, and they have wheels, so it can be moved. Okay. So manufactured houses are one of those that can start out as personal, but turn into what? Turn into real. Okay. Because once you get it to the location, what can you do, Miss Linda? You can anchor that baby. You can anchor it to the ground, remove Real. the tires, and put a put a uh, skirting, and you can then make it real property. Yeah. See, I'm glad to hear this. My students are actually learning because you are seeing this, so that's good. Okay. <clears throat> so that's why we talked about it. it's personal property and real property. <clears throat> Same thing happens with plants. Okay. 
Miss Linda, can you, uh, how do you uh, make a watermelon? Does it just magically just appear? Whoa, what's that thing? I've never heard of that thing. What's a seed? A seed, though, now a seed, how do you make this? Does it just magically appear or how do you get a seed? Well, if the birds drop it, it could magically appear. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, how would you, how, can you go buy them at a store? Yep. Yeah. So if you can buy it at a store, is it real property? No, it's not. Because the fact of the matter is, is that you can hold those seed packets in your hand. Okay. So real estate, it is real estate at the moment that it ends up goes in the ground. Okay. It is personal property as long as you're holding it. Okay. So real property, the minute you put it in the ground, it's real property. The minute that you go over there and you buy it in the store, buy the seeds in the store, it's personal. Now, what if you, let's play along with our watermelon story. So Miss Linda's gone down to Lowe's. She's got watermelon seeds. She's taken the seeds, she put them in the ground. And so at that point it went from personal to real and it's grown and it's now got a watermelon, okay? Now, as long as the watermelon is on the vine, it is what? It's a real property. But the minute that Mr. Eugene goes out there and pulls it off, what is it now? It's personal. Okay? So you have to know those differences there. Okay? There also are certain reservations versus exceptions. There can be certain things that can be agreed upon in the contract that the individual can either reserve or accept for real property. So in the contract, while there may be a chandelier that is attached to the property, that chandelier in the eyes of the buyer is what, Travis? To the buyer, if it's a chandelier hanging from the ceiling, what is it? Real or personal? To the buyer, I think, or, or real. Real. Why? Because they want what? Because they want it. They want it to convey. But to the seller, how do they see it? Oh, that's personal. That's mine. Uh huh. So there are certain things in that situation, and like we talked about in the contracts case or contracts class, you have to remember that if there's a potential of argument, okay, if for example, Miss Linda has this big mirror in her bathroom that she bought from Kirkland's, okay, you have this big mirror in there, Miss Linda, but what's the thing? To you, it's what? When you move out, does it go with you? Yep. To can. you. But to the buyer, what is that? It's staying. Mm -hmm. So that's why in some situations you have to have the reservations or the exceptions that this is not going to convey. Okay, this is going to stay. So let's talk about fixtures. Well, fixtures comes back to that entire initial discussion like we talked about earlier. A fixture is this. Okay, a fixture is something that you go over and you permanently attach it to the real estate structure. So, Miss Linda, question for you. Is this picture right here, is this a fixture? Yes or no first? No. Why do you say that? Because you can take that baby with you. You mean this isn't attached to the wall? No, it's just hanging. It's just hanging there. Okay. So, in that situation, since it's just hanging, you can take it off, then what kind of property is it? Personal. Personal property. Let me take that phone by the way. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Now, Mr. Travis's laptop there. Is that a. Personal. Is, why is it personal, Miss Linda? You can take that thing mobile at anywhere. You can't take it home with you? Yeah, I can take that home. That's a good idea. You want to take it too? Yeah. Man. I need a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so, in that situation, is. Like I tell people is you got to look at how it's done. Now, as of those, and this is where everybody's going to peek up right here. Those of you that are renting, Mr. Garrett, are you renting, sir? Uh-oh, Mr. Garrett's sleeping on me today. Garrett, wake up. Yeah, Garrett's sleeping. I'm here. Can you say that again? There he is. There he is. All right, Mr. Garrett, are you renting? Uh-huh. What'd you say? I said, are you renting property? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me ask you this question. 
in your property. Do you have your TV hung on the wall? No, sir. Ah, smart boy. Smart boy. I was about to, and then you started talking about it, how if they can come take it because it's their property. There he goes. See, that's the thing. If you put a TV on a mount, is it easily removed? No. No, it's not. So in that situation, if it's not easily moved, could a landlord say that that's not a fixture? See, because a lot of times, what do they end up doing? What do they, when you put up a picture, I mean, a, a TV, Mr. Eugene, if you went to Garrett's house tonight to hang his TV for him, and there's a, a stud, are you going to hang it in the stud, or are you just going to put it over here on the sheetrock? Oh, no. You don't have to put it on the stud if you don't want it on the floor. What, <laughs> what? You mean you got to actually put it in the stud? You got to. Why would you want to do such a thing? Because it's heavy, and that sheetrock will not. There you go. So in that situation, you have to make certain that the TV is held properly, okay? If it's not held properly, like Mr. Eugene said, it's going to come crashing down, okay? So in that situation is, is the stud real or personal property? Real. It's real. And what are you doing by putting the TV? What are you doing? It Attaching it to it the, real. the real property. So, real property. so in that situation, what we're getting to in this overall picture is you have to make certain by all means that you are ensuring that everybody has the proper policy in regards to how we're going to be it. Now, does that mean that every property is going to end up being or that the landlord's going to be that strict. No, they're not going to be strict because of the situation is, Mr. Eugene, you may, as a landlord, you may not care that Garrett puts TV up. But Mr. Uh, Travis, who is a property manager and, and manages thousands of properties, do you care if a person puts a TV up? Yeah, because that's your assets and that you're dealing in this business. And so you don't want it, them to be damaging your property. Okay, so you got to look at it. So again, it depends upon who is the landlord and how it's going to be dealt with. Okay, so again, like I just said there, Mr. Eugene, you may agree that it's not, but Mr. Travis may say it is. Okay, that's where you got to come back to your agreement. What does your lease agreement say? If the agreement says you can do it, you can do it. But if your lease agreement says no, you can't, then you better not or you're leaving that TV with you. Okay. So very key in this situation that we do go through and we do end up getting things done properly. So make certain by all means that we do have these different areas put into play properly. Okay. Now, there are going to be legal tests. Okay. And what I mean by this is if, for example, say Mr. Garrett, Mr. Eugene, he goes over and Mr. Garrett says, I want to go put a TV up in my bedroom. And you say, no. Well, there's no agreement. So in that situation, they're going to have to apply the legal test. Okay. And the legal test, the very first one that's going to come into this, Mr. Grossman, you're, thanks, sir. Uh, in this situation, we have our legal test. And what we're getting to is the intent. What is the exact intent when Mr. Garrett puts that TV on the wall? People test. Well, but no, here's the question. Mr. Mr. Stahl, if you see Garrett putting a TV into a stud in your home, what do you think the intention was for him to do? Is he trying to fixate it to the wall? Yeah. Is he possibly adapting it to real estate? Yeah. yeah, he is. And is there a method of annexation? Yeah, is there a look at that unit itself on how the mount is? Yeah. So in that situation, from a legal test, what do we have? Technically, by law, what are we thinking? It's real property. It's going to convey with the land. So when Mr. Garrett leaves, guess what? It's staying. His TV that he just got or he just bought stays. So I laugh a lot of times when I walk into stores, those electronic stores, Walmart, Target, and all them that had those big TVs, big 
big old TVs, okay? People spend thousands of dollars for them. They take them to their rental property and they hang them on the wall. And then they get ready to move out. And guess what? Landlord says, you ain't taking that TV, Stephen. That's why a couple months before your lease, you start taking it down already. Right? <laughs> well, but see, that's if your landlord is not a, now if it's a small landlord, they probably aren't doing checks or walkthroughs. Mm -hmm. But bigger corporations, they actually have people that walk around Watch and look, them. okay, that are watching, all right? So in that situation is you'll see people that are in a bigger corporation. They will go into places and take pictures of the rooms. Why are they doing that, Mr. Stahl? See what's real property. They have that documentation that there was this big 70-inch screen TV in Stephen's bedroom, and now all of a sudden it's gone. You need to go do what? You need to put it back up. Okay? So you got to be very careful in that situation. Now, I have a question. Yes, Ms. Leland. Go ahead, Enrique. Okay, so I thought whenever, like, yeah, whenever you put up a bracket on the wall, you can remove the TV from the bracket. So can't you just take the TV and leave the bracket? It depends on the bracket, okay? There's many different types of brackets. If the bracket is in one piece, okay, and it is all together, then the TV, if it's screwed on, with its normal screws, you shouldn't have a problem, okay, with just basic screws. But the mount has to stay. But if the TV is ending up, like it's one of those ones that doesn't move around, it just kind of hooks on the wall, in that situation, you can unhook it and leave the mount on the TV because it just hooks, it's just like this, like a, a picture. You can take it off, but you just leave that one little metal bar. However, what I'm coming back to is this. There has been landlords that have taken tenants to court over TVs and have won. Now, does that mean that every single one's going to be like that? No, because it's going to depend on where you're at. You may be in College Station and the judges are extremely strict and says the TV stay. While you may, Enrique, be down in Houston and they're very liberal and they say no that goes with the tenant not the landlord so it really comes into where you are in the state if that makes sense does that answer your question enrique yes perfect miss leela um uh, i was just curious just thinking what if um uh, you had you know, mounted your television and whatnot, and then let's say for whatever reason it was broken and you just never replaced that TV, you took it down. Um, maybe because you were planning on buying another one, but would they still try to come after you for a broken television? It just depends on, on what type. Of, like, I'll tell you this. If it's a small mom and pop investment firm, and they own maybe 10, 10 properties, kind of Travis, like yeah. your dad and mom. In that situation, they're probably not going to go after them. But if you're renting from like uh, Mr. Aiden in here, who has, he's in an apartment complex, or not an apartment, but in a probably, we'll say a big a, a complex of townhouses that's owned and managed by one manager, they probably would. So it really just depends, Ms. Leela, on where you're at, location, and how strict your uh, your landlord is, if that makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. So, and, it's, and that's why I always tell people, I don't spend a lot of time here. I just always fair warn everybody. It's one of those that I throw that caution flag up, if you know what I'm saying. Because when a, a student, I see it a lot here. I've seen it both sides. I've seen students that have been very successful and they got to keep their TVs and I've seen students that lost their TVs. I've seen both sides. It comes down to basically how much the landlord really wants to fight over it. Because of course, if Mr. Eugene, you were Leela's uh, property manager, well, guess what happens? You got to go sue Miss Leela to get maybe a $500 TV. Do you really want to go pay Aiden $2,000 to be your attorney to get a $500 TV? Yes. Well, and, and that's right. Some, <laughs> yeah. some people will literally spend $2,000 to get the TV back. So it really just depends on the person. Okay. But again, very good questions. I mean, and that's why I always say, people always say, well, what's the real story? 
Well, it's unfortunately one of those things that I always say it depends. It depends on the situation, okay? Trade fixtures. Now, everybody's probably sitting in this office or been in this office going, wait a minute, Mr. Snows, wait a minute. You got a projector sitting up there. You got TVs all around. That means you get to leave all of that stuff when you move out of this office. All that has to stay. No, because do I use those TVs as part of my business, Mr. Stone? Do I use my projector as part of my uh, business, Mr. Aiden? Yes. Yes. So in that situation, while these are personal property, they are part of my what? My trade. Okay. So by law, as these are my trade, this is part of my trade, I can take them with me. Now, my question, Mr. Garrett, I want to ask you this question. Do you think, Mr. Garrett, that I can just go when I leave and just rip the TVs out of the deal? I'll just go call your grandpa, uh, Mr. Stahl, and say, just come in here, just rip them out of the wall. Okay? And just leave big old hoes. Okay? Yeah. Can I do that, Mr. Garrett, and just leave the property like that? Uh, probably not. You'll get fined. I'd lose my security deposit. Yeah. So in that situation is I can't end up just ripping and leaving big holes, if that makes sense. I have to, in this situation, I actually have to fix any damage that I cause. So any damage that I cause to the, the building, I have to fix it. Okay. It's at my expense. So while I can take it, I also am responsible for fixing it. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So, Mr. Uh, Grossman, can you please stop this one for me and then restart for our next chapter?